It's recently been discovered that you can predict somebody's future mental health based on the structures of their brain before it happens. In fact, you can predict it as early as infancy. In a perfect world, that might mean that you could care for your child's future mental health based on the structure of their brain right when they're born. In reality, such a thing could be used to deny coverage to people. Let's talk about it. There's been a lot of work in the last few years trying to decode people's brains. Psychology and psychiatry is an imperfect practice. People are often misdiagnosed, and they're often not treated appropriately. Treatment-resistant depression occurs in roughly 30% of depression patients. There's been a lot of work to try to find biomarkers, genes, as well as brain structural changes that might identify a certain type of depression or other mental health issue and ways to treat it. Researchers looked at brain activity and aligned it to the type of depression that people had and the types of treatments that were effective. Overall, they were able to identify six specific biotypes, or rather neural architectures, that were associated with these conditions. Depression very well may not be one specific condition, but many together that give similar symptoms. If you're like me, I was diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. I was not diagnosed till I was in grad school, when all of the mechanisms that I had built to try to overcome my limitations failed. I had probably run through a half dozen different diagnoses from various doctors before I actually figured out what was wrong. And yes, I did have to diagnose myself, go to my doctor and say, hey, I think this is what's going on and this is why I think that. And I was lucky that the person listened to me because many more never get a diagnosis. It's probably less prevalent in girls because they tend to mask their symptoms a little bit better, and they also tend to just be viewed through a biased lens. One of the cool things about personalized medicine is that you can actually track the changes. You could determine if a patient is responding well or poorly and change how you might treat them. However, these could be used for nefarious purposes. Back when the Affordable Care Act was enacted, we ended up in a situation where insurance companies could no longer deny you for pre-existing conditions. And I don't think the public is really ready to have that come back. Perhaps a more palatable solution for the general public is having people who are sick or have pre-existing conditions pay higher premiums. That plays in the psychology of us versus them, which seems to be a very good way of dividing people when we really all should be fighting together. And I have heard parents say that they didn't want to do early childhood diagnostics, genetic tests, because they were concerned that it might impact their child's future. If they have a pre-existing condition, they may not be able to receive treatment unless it ends up being acute and new. I think we all acknowledge that that does a lot of harm to everyone. Wouldn't you rather be able to know what your child will likely face? I would. If you don't live in the US and wondering what all the hubbub is about, people literally lose their lives from denials from insurance companies. They try to get away with paying as little as possible and providing as little care as possible. They are a money-making entity. They don't have anything to do with actual well-being. I do want to say that I I think what we're seeing is the culmination of a lot of brewing anger amongst Americans about healthcare. I have personally struggled with this one a lot. I don't think we should celebrate the loss of life, but I think we can acknowledge that that person was indeed a person, but the industry is rotten to its core. I'd like to think that insurance companies are going to change their practices and maybe realize just how angry people are. In reality, I think they're just going to up their security.